Well, good afternoon. I'm very fortunate to have with us our uh, grand guru, really, uh, Rohit Mehta. And Rohit has uh, just recently uh, written uh, with us. Uh, and this can't be all Rohit, by the way, when you do grants. You have to work together because he needs your nuances and your insights and facts and, and biases so that you get really what you want and enable you to further identify yourself with the grantor, provide an identity that they come to understand and appreciate, hopefully. So with us, we just got a really interesting grant. As many of you know, we're, we're pulling together an artist hub. And uh, as we do that, we need to help artists move to the hub. So we've just secured the money for just that kind of person, uh, a digital navigator to help move uh, Mississauga professional artists into our new virtual marketplace, our hub for artists. I'm not telling you the name because that's going to be released later. So thanks for your good work on that, Rohit. And I understand there's a number of really uh, kind of exciting and promising grants available from the Ontario Arts Council. And Mac would like to help uh, a few select artists in their pitch to the OAC. So Rohit, what's coming up? Absolutely, Mike. So there's a, a number of grants that we're going to be uh, talking about with the OAC. And the first one is the Media Artists Creation Projects. So this one is due on April 7th. It's coming up and they're offering two different uh, streams of funds. Emerging artists can earn uh, up to $10,000 and mid-career and established artists can earn up to $40,000. And again, that's the Media Artists Creation Projects. And what I'll do is I'll send along a document which actually summarizes a number of the grants we talk about today. Nice. So with that in mind, let's dig into the first one, the digital arts. What's the goal behind this grant? What's OAC hoping to achieve with this grant? Yeah, so Media Artist Creation Projects is all about the media arts. Um, and ideally, what they're trying to do is to support uh, artists who really specialize in this area, either those who are emerging, um, who have completed at least one independent media work um, and are not enrolled in formal education, and then those are, who are mid-career and established. And so you should have completed at least two previous uh, media works independently, um, and you should have at least five years of uh, independent media arts practice. Uh, and so established artists have a history of uh, at least 15 years of that practice. So this is ideal for someone who really wants to take seriously the opportunity to do a short drama, to do a documentary of some sort that is gonna have legs. It's gonna attract an audience. It's gonna further their career. Are those considerations that the OAC looks at? Always. I mean, the OAC is a professional arts funder. They want to support professionals. They want to support artists who are committed to that work um, and, and who, who are part of the profession. So the more experience you have, the, the further you can go with those grants. There's another advantage for a Mississauga-based digital artist just by virtue of living in Mississauga. Mm -hmm. My understanding is they're favored because there aren't as many applications from Mississauga as the OAC would like to see. Is that correct? That's right, Mike. So there's something called OAC priority groups. And so one of those priority groups is artists living in regions outside of Toronto. And what's interesting is that being from Mississauga, you actually get an advantage. So you're scored slightly higher. Let's say you're somebody who is um, coming from a diverse background. They're called people of color to the OAC, and that's another uh, priority group. Let's say you're ages 18 to 30. Uh, I believe the term is like young people ages 18 to 30. That's another priority group. So, so you can score extra points by bringing that diversity, bringing that geographic diversity and the, the I guess the youth um, perspective as a professional artist to this, this particular funder. So if you were a, a youth uh, person of color, video producer, director, then you've already got three sort of advantageous qualities in terms of how it's appraised. Is that right? Right. Wow. Well, okay. 
that's promising. That's great. What's the deadline for that? And, and what's the first thing somebody should do when they're looking at a grant like this? Yeah. So April 7th uh, is the deadline that's coming up. Yikes. And I think, I think one needs to go on the OAC website, read up on the Media Artists Creation Projects page. So each of these grants has a page. Uh, you can Google it. You don't have to, you don't have to even navigate their website. Just Google OAC Media Artists Creation Projects and read through it and, and, and make sure you're eligible because it's all about the, um, the guidelines that they've listed there. It's so usually just uh, you know two or three pages of information. You read through it. You ask yourself, is this me? Am I qualified? Do I fit under all of these criteria and objectives? And if you do, you know, then, then they should reach out to you, Mike, and, and reach out to the Slide Arts Council. Well, uh, one thing that they can do is secure your assistance. We're not really in position ourselves to help people write grants, but we are in position to secure someone to help them. So if we get two great applications, uh, we'll provide them consulting support from you right away on these grants. So we want to see good things happen. Uh, we believe, based on our conversations with you, that a couple of hours with you would really help them organize the thinking in their grant. And frankly, they're going to learn a lot and establish a lot by doing it themselves. So we're prepared to uh, secure your assistance for two hours for two different grant applicants and uh, encourage them to put together as much as possible because then you're better able to improve on it based on the, the quality of work they've already done. And with mm -hmm. it being April 7th, they need to jump on this right now. Yeah. There's another one on April 8th. It's OAC Dance <laughs> Projects. <laughs> okay, what's right. that one about? So OAC Dance Projects uh, funds a few different areas. The development of new dance works, $5,000. Production and presentation of dance, up to $20,000. Wow. Dance series or festivals up to fifteen thousand dollars, and dance sector development initiatives five thousand. So the foundation is, uh, or the council, the Ontario Arts Council, is really trying to support that subsector as a whole. And I think no matter what you do, if you are someone who practices the professional practice of dance, you really want to look at that uh, grant with an April eighth deadline. You know, we've had two really strong dance films produced for Mac with micro grants in this past year. And are video productions acceptable to this grant? I, I don't know per se if um, video productions are the focus, but with the pandemic and a lot of things being virtual, um, you know, we should be able to find in the in the guidelines a way for us to um, submit some sort of a video production. I, I don't think it's unusual at this time. Traditionally, it would be unusual, but right now, maybe not so much. Um, and so that's something I would encourage uh, each individual applicant to, to just read through on, on their um, guidelines. And, and it, it, should, it should mention that. I'm just not, not sure off the top of my head. Okay. Well, once again, uh, if there are uh, two good quality applicants uh, to you, then uh, I think Matt can, can rationalize uh, another uh, two hour session with you times two or just one if there's only one applicant, but we'd love to see people take advantage of the advantage of being from Mississauga uh, in these applications. We're also interested in putting together a bit of a film festival of dance videos. So that's something we'd like to do Ontario wide if we can. Um, so, in the short term, April 8th, uh, look at what you're doing as a dance organization and take advantage of this golden opportunity from the mm -hmm. OAC. And uh, for those of you who get in first with good ideas, the top two, we'll certainly uh, come up with uh, $125 each to cover some of your valuable time and helping them put their proposals together. Wonderful. Anything else? Are there any more? Uh, I mean, it's great. It's yeah, great. you know, there, there's actually a full uh, a full list of them, and, and and I'll certainly share that along for for Mac members. But I think OAC Music Creation Projects is the other one to be aware of. April 14th is that deadline, and they're going to offer up to four thousand dollars for self directed creation, and up to twenty thousand dollars for commissioning uh, music creation. 
Uh, and so again, what's the, commissioning music creation. What's how's that defined? What does that entail? Right. So so out of the two categories, um, you know, self-directed creation means you're creating it on your own. Uh, you're self-directed. You're um, you're sort of an independent um, uh, somebody who is independently composing. You know, doing songwriting, music creation. Um, that would go a long way to getting an extended play piece completed. We have been involved in that ourselves with micro grants, mm -hmm. and uh, we've found that twenty-five hundred dollars was very useful to artists who were recording uh, a, a self-directed uh, multiple song piece mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, create their CD. And uh, four thousand dollars is what, you know, that would make a big difference. Uh, so that's great. Absolutely. Um, and, and we and would, uh, you know, support uh, someone with a, a suitable proposal. By suitable, I mean something that holds water and makes sense and you can work with, um, that you could work with indeed, and we'll uh, engage you for a couple hours to help that. And then the second one, the really interesting, because it's $20,000, mm -hmm. uh, that one, uh, I'm still not sure what that means. Yeah, so those are projects where a composer is essentially contracted by some sort of an ensemble or an arts organization, or even maybe a music education organization, or, or any individual who wishes to commission and uh, premiere, you know, some sort of new work, some sort of a new piece. So, so wow. there's certain certain considerations there. So, for example, and if you're doing opera, you must commit to uh, production development or workshops. Um, if you're if your um, composer fees include an activity that uh, occurred before the deadline for something like a, um, a lyricist fee, um, you know, that's allowed, but, but they have a, a lot of information about this in the guidelines there. So, so for each individual aspect of commissioning, you need to definitely read the guidelines and make sure you fit in. So what we would like to see is from applicants to this, and, and we'll simply pick the ones that look best to us and and, and then commission you to help them. But basically, they don't need to do that. They can do it themselves if they want to. We're not trying to, you know, step in uh, inappropriately at, at all. It's just helping move ideas forward so they get turned into projects. Mm -hmm. um, I guess our step would be that they get in touch with us with some sort of one page or proposal that says, here's what we want to do and here's how good it is. And then we'll look at the, you know, the first good one that uh, we see and we'll um, engage you. And if we get, you know, outstand more than one outstanding one, then we'll probably find a way to support that too. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're fortunate uh, to have a little bit of uh, funding available to us from our friends at uh, TD and our culture lab program. And this becomes a sort of a personalized extension of TD culture lab. So thanks to TD and thanks to our team and thanks to you. So we hope, some great ideas come forward from this little grant talk we've had. Right on. Thanks for your time, Mike. Pleasure. Thank you.